someone came full on sprinting. He was pointing a weapon straight at our chests. I see this guy take his head and literally shove it against the fence. We would be dead and we would have no one to blame but ourselves. Right. Today is not gonna be a regular Sam and Colby 2.0 video, so if you came expecting the content that we have been posting on a weekly basis, then sorry, this is not gonna be it. The reason for that is we haven't really been feeling ourselves recently because, you know, we've been doing a lot of these videos and a lot of them are pretty, like, crazy. I mean, like we said, it's like the scariest or craziest night every single week. We get made fun of for that because we say it, and at the end of the day, Believe it or not, like, these things do kind of, like, carry a weight with them. Just kind of making us feel not really into it. So until we get back in that headspace of wanting to do those types of videos, like, putting ourselves out there, um, we're gonna hold off. Personally, it hasn't really affected me too much. Like, I've still been fine. Like, I've still been able to hang out with friends, have good times and stuff like that. I think it's hit you a little bit harder. Like, I know I've seen you, like, tweet, like, say, like, Instagram stories about how it's been affecting you because... Like, we capture everything on camera, you see what we experience, and that, that's scary, especially when you're, like, imagine you go to the Queen Mary, and then the next night, you're laying in bed, and you hear something in your room, that's, it like, messes you up. We first saw it when you, you guys all told us on the comments that I was acting super weird on the Queen Mary night, and that's, I think, because... I really didn't want to do that. I don't know, I think I was just kind of forcing it and mm -hmm. just going into that and like forcing a video and then all that extra stuff happening just kind of made me be like, okay, wait. We probably shouldn't do this every single Right, like, like when, when a camera's on, we're really focused on making a video. So during the Queen Mary, when Sam's like, trying to get us to play the Ouija board or for example, like knock on the door and stuff like that, it's honestly just for the video. But at the same time, it's like, Scary, it messes you up. But with that being said, a lot of horrible, scary things have happened to us in the past, and as you can tell by the title, we're gonna be talking about one of those and showing video evidence of that today. This is a story that we have not told anyone. No. We haven't even told our families. No, so. mom, I'm sorry. But that being said, one thing before we start this video, we do not put any blame on anybody but ourselves. We are the reason why this happened to us, and to be quite honest, we could be dead right now. Exploring the abandoned is a very dangerous, dangerous activity. We're lucky that we're even standing here right now. So yeah, basically what we're trying to say is hopefully you take this video, you see what happened to us, and you realize that it's probably not the smartest thing to go out and explore. We're dumb. Just remember that. We're the dummies. You, you guys be smart. And another thing, this is not what happened in Florida for the whole jail situation. We did not get arrested for the things that we're about to talk about. This is not about the court cases or anything. That, again, we still have to wait for a couple more months before we can talk about it. For now, this is what happened two days prior to that. Before we get into this, keep in mind that this was supposed to be a video in itself on Sam and Colby back when we did the Explore stuff. We're gonna be kind of telling the story, but we're also gonna be showing you as much as we can of the actual incident. So with that being said, let's start from the beginning. What's up guys, it's Sam and Colby. And welcome to Miami, Florida. Guys, we literally just got off of our plane flight like 30 minutes ago. It wasn't a regular plane flight, it was a uh, overnight flight so we have not slept more than like three hours no. in 24 hours so, so we look a little rough that's why we just got this random dm and she was like hey you can park at this shell gas station right by the airport and bam there's a hospital who knew now the one thing is they didn't tell us how to get in and we heard three cop sirens because this is right by the airport so it might might suck trying to get in so again, just recap, this was our very first video in Florida, 8 o'clock in the morning. We had no idea about this. We got the information from a DM, but yeah, this is us actually going into the place. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. We're in view of the street. There's a huge like, facility right there yeah. that had probably 400 cars in it. So it's like a full working office right next door. Keep that in mind, guys. We thought this was an office. It wasn't an office. We'll tell you later, but it wasn't an office. You will see it is surrounded by a ton of 
huge buildings in the middle of an airport area. So we were not trying to be sneaky about this, I guess, which is our fault. All right. You figured it out? You got this, man. You got you? this, man. Jimmy, your way. You good. You good. Oh. Yes. Yes. We're in. Oh my God, dude. Look at that. What? Dude, we might need our masks for this place. My heart is pounding. Why? Probably because I just climbed something and I suck at climbing, but also <laughs> it's kind of scary. So the thing about this place is obviously not in this room, but as we go higher and higher, there's going to be open windows and like the entire wall on this side of the building is just completely demolished. That means the highway can see us and we're gonna have to like avoid all outside areas. We, did, we didn't avoid any outside areas. Yeah, this is probably one of the most open abandoned places we've ever been and we were not prepared. Yeah. All right, we found our staircase. There's the outside right there, like you said. All that faces the highway. We were just talking about this off camera guys, but Again, if it was that easy for us to be able to get in here, like without even trying basically, then most anybody could. So there could be any homeless people in here, like, who knows? This looks literally like a dressing room. <laughs> it's probably where you like go and put a gal on stuff. That sounded like a whistle. Yeah. What was that? Actually, it might've been a break. From yeah, we're so close to the highway that any of that could just be breaks. So. Okay, okay. Let's find the staircase. I want to get to the top. Is this it? Yes. Hey, oh my that God. looks sick, dude. That's where we are in relation to the highway. Oh my God! There's... We could easily be seen. That's insane, dude. Oh! That's the dude. That's the building. That's the building. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Yeah. Alright, come over here. There is a full fledged office building right there through this window, so show them. Alright, I'm gonna show you guys really quick. But this is a working office building. You can even see cars in the parking lot right now, so that means they can easily see this. So again, keep in mind, on our right is that building that you saw, on our left was a highway, and then there was nothing basically. It was like around an airport area, and that was it. Again, over and over and over, you guys hear us, we think it's an office building. Now, if it was an office building, the circumstance that ended up happening probably wouldn't have happened. As you can blatantly see from the footage, it wasn't an office building. Oh yes! Oh dude, this is beautiful! Oh, this is where we're gonna get caught though. Dude. This is where things start to get interesting. Mm -hmm. Here's Miami, the whole view of the city. Get down. Whoa! Whoa. The second that you said we shouldn't get caught, and there's police sirens? Right, like. Probably right there too. Yeah, and that was only on for like two seconds. Dude, this is why I love exploring. Yes, it's nine in the morning. I don't care. We just we just flew here, didn't get any sleep on our flight. Who gives a f I'm just happy to be here, you know? I was gonna say, dude, we literally landed 45 minutes ago, maybe an hour max, and we've already seen like the whole skyline of Miami. <laughs> oh, speaking of, Whoa. holy crap. All right, man, I think we should get up there. All right. That, every single person will be able to see us. Yes, we, we can only stand for like five, ten seconds. Let's go. This is the view. Oh, Jesus. We're so seen right here. One pano, and then we gotta get out. Yeah, you're right, you're right. All right, guys. Welcome to Florida. Holy crap. That's beautiful. It wasn't beautiful for very long, was it, Sam? So at this point was our very first mistake. As you heard us, we knew it was gonna happen. We said probably 10 times throughout this video that if we go to the top, someone is gonna see us because of how populated it is. Mm -hmm. However, we did it anyway and paid the price for it. Someone did actually see us at the very top and we'll get into that later. We got that on camera, I'm shaking right now. What the f was that? Somebody was definitely in there, following you. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Someone's here, someone's here, go, 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 go. Really? Yes, yes. 
So as you guys can see, um, there was somebody in the premise. We literally heard something slam as soon as we got to the bottom. And what? We saw, or I think you saw a lady like in like a yellow working outfit. We thought we saw someone in there. We cut it down a lot, but we ran back and forth trying to avoid getting seen for probably about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. When we finally thought the coast was clear, obviously we were taking it very carefully comparatively to everything else. That's when we kind of knew. All right, if someone's downstairs and we were up at the very top getting seen, we're probably getting it screwed. When we ran across the field, we had entered through a giant opening the fence. Like we thought we could just walk back out and be fine. However, at that opening in the fence, I saw a lady coming in with like one of those security vests, you know, like the bright orange ones. And that's when we knew we were screwed. So that was the entrance we came in. The only other way to go was to that office place where we had to jump over a little fence and then run through the parking lot to safety. It turned out it was not an office. And this is where everything goes wrong. We'll just play out what we have so far and then we'll let you know the full story of what happened when we couldn't film anymore. I'm gonna take this off, put it in the backpack. There was a girl in a yellow security vest walking towards us through the entrance that we took. She's probably following us out right now. We're gonna have to put away from the camera when we hop the fence, but we'll tell you everything in a second. So like I just said at the end of the scene, I was gonna pull out my phone and record. And for some reason, we're trying to upload this onto our Premiere like editing software and it's not working. So I'm gonna have to show you it on my phone right here. This was literally like five seconds after I stopped recording on the camera. All right guys, so I'm on my phone now. There's literally a lady following us right now, but I think we'll be fine, especially if we go right here. You wanna just run for it? Right, let's go, let's go. Starting the story for legal purposes, for YouTube purposes, and for our safety, we're gonna reference that thing that police officers carry on their hip as a weapon. We're not going to specify what type of weapon, but you guys get the point. So from my iPhone video, you guys were able to see that we went up to a fence that had this guard post, right? So like, you know, whenever you go into like a parking garage and there's like one of those bars that lower and then you have to like click it for a ticket and then it raises, it was like one of those and it had a guard post right next to it. We saw a car sitting there, so we just decided as soon as he was gonna press the button, We'll just run right through and then we'll be free. I don't know if you guys could hear this, but there was literally somebody that said, hey, and then said, get out of the, or like started to say something and then immediately it cut. Hey. My initial reaction was, I'm not gonna film this. There's this police officer screaming at me. So I went, boom. Like you said, it was a police officer. Someone came full on sprinting with a bulletproof vest on a whole get up. He was pointing a weapon straight at our chests. At this point, we had no idea what we did wrong. Like we were under the impression that we we're just walking out of an office building, what's going on? He kept screaming, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. We immediately said, yes, sir. Like we do not understand what's going on. Like at first, I even thought it was a joke. I literally thought someone like was pranking us. We quickly realized it was a serious situation when this guy came straight up to us, probably about 10, 15 feet away, pointing straight at us. This dude was screaming at us saying, freeze, 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 stop what you're doing, while we were just standing there, not moving at all, just being like, whoa, 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 what are, what's, what's going on? At this point, we were frozen. We were not gonna go anywhere. He understood that. So he yelled into his walkie talkie for backup. Within about 15 seconds, two other cop cars swarmed us, pulling out weapons, pointing at our chest as well. Now this main guy who called in was 15 feet away. These guys, individual officers, came straight up to us, probably three feet away. As far as this camera is from us, there was a weapon pointed at our face. This was the very first time I had ever seen a weapon pointed at me in general. Like I don't even know if I've seen like a weapon out that often. And in this moment, all time seemed like slow down and we were on game mode of, wow, our lives are in danger right now and we need to follow every single direction or else we could die. And the reason why we thought that is because these guys were aggressive. Our main guy was obviously screaming at us, but these two guys, they had no idea where we had just got caught. All they knew were these two random 22 year old kids who were running out of this office building and we had like backpacks and Explorer merch on and stuff like that. They were pissed. Get the f 
down, get the f you are so f we got you. You guys are done, you guys are absolutely fucked. Mm -hmm. So we believed that immediately, and we were like, why, 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 why? What are you doing at the school? We, what school? What school? We were at the abandoned hospital. We had no idea, but that place that we were actually going through to get outside was an elementary school. That tall building was an elementary school, and we, of course we didn't, have, like we had no idea. I've never seen an elementary school with more than one level. It's always like flat. I don't know if you guys had this where you lived, but we did these things called code reds, which means that if there was a stranger in an elementary school or a school, there would be a code red and literally the entire school gets locked down and everybody like hides like in corners of their room and stuff because there's a stranger on the property. So basically there's us, two 22 year old kids running with a backpack in a school, of course, it's a very serious situation. So they called Code Red, which immediately called another three to six cops swarming us again. The school cops came out, all the people on the parking lot like left. We were sitting there with, at that point, probably five weapons pointed at us. They were all screaming, what are we doing here? We were trying to explain, but we couldn't. They wouldn't even let us explain. Like we would try to just talk and then they would just be like, what are you doing? Ah, what are you, ah, just screaming. We were just like, what? whoa, chill, chill, chill. Like we're not doing anything. Like hands up and everything very, very chill. I don't know. We could completely understand why they were doing that because it, it looked really, really bad. However, the way that it went down freaked us out. It was almost traumatizing, because if you can imagine, us two, there's three or four police officers on a perimeter pointing weapons at us, and there's two individual coming straight at us, turning us around, throwing us up, up against a fence. They were being aggressive, screaming in your ear, like this close, you are fucked. you are fucked. You're, you're going, going to, to jail. jail. And we really believe that. Guys, I kid you not, I looked over at Sam during all this chaos and I see this guy take his head and literally shove it against the fence and just start screaming. And we're just like, chill, chill, we're not doing anything wrong, we promise. And they just wouldn't believe us. They, it, they just kept yelling. So immediately we were handcuffed, they took my backpack, they took all of our phones, they threw us on the ground, and they kept pointing their weapons at us and called in more backup. Guys, this was a huge deal, I don't know how many because we were faced towards the fence on the ground we were told to look at the ground but we could tell there was cars on cars on cars the police actually shut down the road next to us it was insane so while they're yelling and everybody still has their weapons pointed at us and everything they put us in handcuffs very tight by the way probably still have bruises from it just kidding but it was like bad were not nice to us at all didn't let us talk had us against the fence the entire time then shoved us onto the ground to where we were sitting crisscross towards the fence. They like took our IDs, they called the Miami Police Department, which we didn't clarify this, but the police that were on guard of this elementary school were actually working underneath the school department. So they were not technically real police officers, they were the school police officers. So they had to go and call the Miami department to come down here. On their way, it took 30 minutes of us, unable to talk to each other, unable to look at each other, sitting opposite, face down, handcuffed, and we thought it was the end. We were like, oh God, we're going to jail, we're getting arrested, we're getting to find something. 100%, this was the scariest part, guys, because during all the chaos, our adrenaline was pumping. We were just like, oh, what do we need to do? And we were on that slow motion, like, let's figure this out mode. But as soon as we got time to sit down and they kept saying, you guys are f you guys are going to jail, like, ha, we caught you. They were laughing in our faces, basically. Making fun of us. That was when we had the time to where I was like, shoot, I'm about to go to jail. I'm gonna have to call my mom and tell her that I'm gonna be locked up. That's one of the worst thoughts I've ever had in my life. Not, not even kidding. And if you can imagine right now, two kids growing up from Kansas, like we have never experienced anything like this at all. We had just looked down the barrel of five weapons pointed at our face from 10 feet away. And now we're getting thrown up against fences, thrown on the ground, telling us that we are getting yeah. This was just a traumatizing point in our lives and after about 30 minutes the Miami police Finally up showing up. showed up finally showed up and this is where things kind of take a turn because we finally had a chance to talk Basically the sheriff comes out of the car asks all the school officers what the situation was and they try to explain it Even though they didn't let us explain what happened he comes up to us asks us what happens We're very polite very respectful and tell him just 
everything. We say, you know, we're two kids. We were filming a video in this abandoned hospital. From LA, we're YouTubers. Yeah, we're not even from here. We literally just landed like an hour ago or so. Decided this was the easiest way to get out of the hospital and to just go through this fence. And then that was it. We were going to be on our way out. We had no idea that it was an elementary school. We even said like up until this point, we had thought it was an office building. So we're so, so sorry. He searched our bags. He saw that we had cameras. He saw that we had masks and stuff like that and flashlights. So obviously our story like made sense. Mm -hmm. And our record was clean. We had never done anything. This again, like we said, this was two days before the actual other arrest happened that we cannot talk about. How ironic is that? Uh, super ironic. However, so this guy picked us up, basically said, I know what you guys are doing. I did the same thing when I was a kid, but this building over here could fall over at any point. You guys could die. Mm -hmm. And also, do you guys realize that my men, pointing out to the guys that were carrying the weapons, could have fired on you and they would be in the right. They would have all right and jurisdiction to shoot to kill us and we would be dead and we would have no one to blame but ourselves. Right. And at that moment I was like, wow, we actually could have died. Easily. I wish you guys could somehow see, obviously we didn't record it, but I wish you could see how aggressive and unnecessarily mean they were being because then you would have a hundred percent believed that yeah we were gonna die and that's why we kept this off of social media for so long was because we had to like take time to like heal from that traumatic experience like i remember i still think about it dude me too me too and th that night when we got to the hotel like it just ruined our entire mood for for the rest of the day and we just oh man we say this was crazy experience traumatic and unnecessarily aggressive, but we can't blame anybody but ourselves. Mm -hmm. like we put ourselves in this situation. Obviously the police were just doing their job. So again, absolutely no hates to the Miami Police Department. They were just doing their work. Obviously like telling us that we're gonna get fucked and laughing at us was not a great image. Which was the school officers, not Which was the school off, yeah. Not the actual Miami people. Everyone from the Miami team was super nice. So going back to the story, the sheriff after he told us that said, all right, these guys have basically been traumatized enough. They basically looked death in the eye today. I think we should just let them go. After we walked away, I was shaking. I was like shaking for a good hour. It was nuts. Obviously, as you see us, we have done videos. Since then, we're okay. We're not dead, obviously, but we could have been. It was just a traumatic experience that we waited a long time to tell you guys because we wanted to kind of frame it a different way than the way we experienced. We filmed this video the night of actually it happening but we realized that there's a much better way to come about this and we could have avoided the whole situation if we didn't go to this abandoned building. So we kind of want to let you guys know this is dangerous. Things could happen to us or could have in the past. You guys might have never seen us again after that because of our mistake. You never know. That's why we really wanted to take this week especially just to think about everything and reflect because I just feel like ever since Sam and Colby 2.0 has started it's kind of just been like a weekly what can we do to do better what can we work where can we go next like how can we up this blah, blah 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 and it's just like we need to slow down and think about situations like this to where things can go wrong yeah. if we, if we, we started we... sam colby 2.0 to not be in dangerous situations but we've been pushing the bar over and over and over again to where we're kind of getting back into dangerous situations right right like is it worth it is it worth our safety like whether it's paranormal or having weapons pointed at our face like I don't know. This is kind of just a story to catch you up on everything that we've experienced in the past, kind of learn our lesson through our actions without actually having to go through it. But moral of the story, don't do what we do. I know we say explore the world, but explore it in a safe way. Go out with a big group of friends to like public areas, go travel to really cool places. Don't go to the like sketchy parts of town or do illegal activity because you will regret it. Yeah, leave that stupid stuff to us or our old selves. Yeah, we're not trying to do that anymore. We learned our lesson and I still think about it. We obviously don't post that content anymore. However, we filmed four to five Florida videos that were Sam and Colby 1.0 types of videos. We are going to be publishing those, including this video in its full length on our channel memberships because we don't have a channel for it anymore. If you guys don't know what a channel membership is, right next to that subscribe button, there's a button that says join. Click that and you'll figure everything out. Yeah, we have podcasts on there that go up, but now for the next four or five months, we're gonna have also these exploration videos that we're gonna go to waste before this. We did a lot of crazy stuff, dude.
Yeah, I like wish, a lot I wish of crazy we could post stuff. those videos. I wish that we could too, but it just wouldn't make sense for our channel. So I hope you guys understand. I hope that doesn't make you like upset, but if we posted our explore videos right now, it just would be backtracking, especially with all of our court stuff going on. It's we just can. not smart. We did this video to take a break because uh, of all the crazy stuff that we've done with Sam Colby 2.0. We kind of needed to get in a better mindset. At this point, we don't know whether we're coming back this week or next week. Uh, we just got to figure out our plan. But if you want to keep up to date, obviously we can't make a video every day. We have all these other socials, so go check us out on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat, all that stuff. We'll let you guys know on our Duo Twitter, which again is right here if we're gonna be posting uh, this next week. But yeah, that's the, the best way to like find out. I hope you guys understand. And guys, we love all your support. I mean, I-, I We have I the know best fans in the world. Seriously, you guys we are do. always there for us. If you enjoyed this and you like these sit down videos, just the best thing you can do for us is give it a like. It shares the video, gets this message out to all of our followers. That'd be great. And this is like the worst video to plug merch on, but uh, <laughs> if you want to go get some merch, do it. There's this, a sale. Yeah, I think this is the last week we're actually selling this too, because it's about sold out. Oh shoot, so you guys you guys gotta hurry, go do it. There's that too, but um, we may or may not see you guys next Sunday, but whatever Sunday it's gonna be, it's gonna be at 1.14 PST. So we'll see you on socials. We'll keep you up to date. Hope you guys liked this story time. <laughs> Scary. Peace. Welcome to Miami, Florida.